So now we're gonna talk about what's new in topical therapy. I run the clinical trials at Henry Ford Health and these are my relevant disclosures. So I'm gonna go over some key tips. What do you really need to know when we're thinking about topical therapy for psoriasis? There's a common misconception. If I'm able to write for generic clobetazole, I don't really need anything else. Is that really true? Well, actually, it's not true. We know that combination therapy is statistically superior to individual ingredients, and that's been shown for the fixed combination of calcipatrine and beta-methasone dipropionate, and also tazeratine and halobetazole. And these drugs have complementary mechanisms of action, and each drug actually minimizes the other's side effect profile. So let's start by talking about the fixed combination of calcipatrine and beta-methasone dipropionate. We have two key formulations. The first is a cream formulation that utilizes pad technology, and the second one is a foam formulation. So what am I talking about when I say pad technology? If you want to make a cream, you have to take an oil and put it in water. Oil and water don't want to mix. Think about salad dressing. So in order to get them to mix, you have to add a lot of surfactants. And the problem with surfactants is they can be irritating and they can impede penetration. Pad technology actually utilizes a more robust oil droplet. And as such, they can minimize the, the surfactants, they get enhanced penetration, and they're able to use a nice cream formulation. So this fixed combination utilizing pad technology was studied as compared not only to the vehicle, but also to an active control. In this case, the fixed combination suspension, using it every day for eight weeks in patients with mild to moderate psoriasis. And what we found was, yes, with this cream formulation, the pad technology, it was statistically superior not only to the vehicle, but also to the active control or the suspension formulation. And that was true over eight weeks, getting about 40% of patients to clear, almost clear, with a too great improvement. We also saw a nice reduction in itch that kicked in as early as week one and continued to increase over the course of the eight weeks. What about the side effect profile? We actually found that this formulation was well tolerated on the skin, not a major difference between the active and the vehicle. So what about proactive therapy? You know, we see these clinical trials that go for maybe four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, then what do we do? So we used to tell patients, go ahead and treat until clear and then use it maybe twice a week. But we didn't have good evidence to actually support that. So recently we conducted a clinical trial with the fixed combination calcipatrine beta methasone dipropionate in the foam formulation. We treated everybody once a day for four weeks and in those patients who got to clear, almost clear, they went on to say, okay, half of you are gonna use the medication twice a week, half of you are gonna use vehicle twice a week. Can we prolong the efficacy by using proactive treatment twice a week? And what we found was yes, it does actually work. If you get a patient to clear, almost clear, and you continue to treat those areas, you can maintain the success for a longer period of time. We saw a 43% reduction in the risk. We also saw 41 extra disease-free days if you use proactive therapy. I would recommend get the patients to completely clear before you try to institute proactive therapy. The other fixed combination that we have is tazeratine and halobetazole. This is in a unique lotion formulation that actually allows these two drugs to have synergistic efficacy. It's an elegant formulation, and we saw a maintenance of effect for at least a month after you stop the medication. With this vehicle, we allow this medication to have enhanced penetration into the skin. The halobetazole is 80% less than the currently available halobetazole that's on the market. The tazeratine is also less than the currently available tazeratines. Yet what we find is enhanced penetration with this lotion formulation. And in clinical trials with the fixed, uh, the fixed combination, we saw again about 40% of patients getting to clear, almost clear, using this drug once a day in moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. So here's an example of a patient at baseline. We see it kicking in by week two. Nice improvement by week eight, but look at week 12. They've been off drug for a full month, and they look even better than when they stopped. 
So we did a postdoc analysis and we said, huh, well, how about that? How many people are actually maintaining their efficacy a full month off drug? We found that about 62% maintain efficacy. But what was interesting was 13.5% of patients who hadn't reached treatment success at the end of the treatment actually continued to improve their treatment success one month off therapy. So why can't we take one drug and just put it on top of the other? I've seen halobetazole before, I've seen tazeratine before, I can just do it myself and layer these two drugs. Well, the truth is you don't know what's going to happen to the actives when you layer one vehicle on top of another. Here we see tazeratine by itself in the cream formulation with a nice, a nice penetration, but when you layer, Tazeratine and halobetas all together, we significantly diminish the penetration of the tazeratine into the skin. So you can't just put one drug on top of another and have any idea what's gonna happen to efficacy overall. So what else is new? Well, we have a new, new, two new topicals, both non-steroidal options, and Tepinarov was thought to be important enough to be published in the New England Journal of Medicine as a lead article for the phase three clinical trials. We know that this is a small molecule. It's an RO hydrocarbon receptor agonist. It works inside the cell to downregulate Th17 cells, important for psoriasis, decrease oxidative stress, improve the skin barrier, important for psoriasis as well as atopic dermatitis, and downregulate Th Th2 cytokines, which is important for atopic dermatitis. In psoriasis, we studied this in mild, moderate, and severe disease. Cream formulation, 1% once a day over the course of 12 weeks, two sister studies, active drug versus vehicle. When we look at who came into the study, we see again, typical psoriasis patients, but we had a good percentage of mild disease, moderate disease, and severe, really thick disease. So we studied kind of all comers in these, in these clinical trials, and on average, they had about seven to 8% body surface area of involvement. We saw that this drug was highly statistically significant in both clinical trials, getting patients to clear or almost clear in up to 40%, a nice delta or difference between the active drug and the vehicle. We saw a nice improvement in pruritus, and we've talked about the fact itching is so bothersome to these patients. We see a very steep slope initially with an improvement as early as week two, and that continues over the course of 12 weeks. About 60% of patients getting a four-point reduction in itch. Nice improvement as early as week four, continued improvement by week 12. And one thing that I notice about this drug, although I can't say it happens in every patient, is I really see complete clearing in those patients who get to completely clear. I don't necessarily, necessarily see the residue or the pink spot or the brown spot that persists, especially when we use a topical steroid on the skin. This is a patient that I showed earlier with hand disease. This is a treatment failure from the clinical trials, but a nice improvement overall with a DLQI score of 14, remember between above 10 is major impact on quality of life, going all the way down to a one. And their itch eight out of 10, going down to a one out of 10. So does this work on larger body surface areas? What's unique about these topical studies is we go up to 20% body surface area. There are patients between 20, 10 and 20% who are candidates for systemic therapy. Can we use a topical for patients who have more widespread disease? Not 60% BSA, not 50% BSA, but what about 10 to 20% BSA? And what we find was, first of all, whether it was mild, moderate, severe, this drug works well, even in the thicker plaques. But look at those patients who have more widespread disease. It worked well whether you had localized disease or more widespread disease, getting them to clear or almost clear. It also didn't matter how long you had had the disease, short periods of time or even greater than 10 years. What about tolerability? And as I mentioned, tolerability is critical. When we think about non-steroidal agents, topical vitamin D, topical vitamin A, tacrolimus, pimicrolimus, even chrysoboral, we expect some stinging and burning that can occur with any of the non-steroidals. We didn't see that in this, to the same extent with Depinarov. In terms of the side effect profile, folliculitis, 
occurs in up to 20% of patients. It can occur. It's generally mild to moderate. And very few patients dropped out because of the folliculitis. Same was true for contact dermatitis, up to about 5 to 7% overall. Generally mild to moderate. Very few people drop out because of that particular AE. As somebody who does clinical trials, I look to see the dropout rate because of adverse events. That gives me a better understanding of how patients are reacting to these drugs. There was an open label, long-term extension study. Patients were treated until they got to completely clear skin. They then went off drug, and we waited to see them get to mild disease or worse. And that study was open label for an additional 40 weeks after the initial phase three clinical trials. It's a safety study. Do we see any new safety signals when patients have access to this drug over the course of a year? Bottom line was no. We didn't see any new safety signals. But we did find that patients who continue to have access to this drug, almost 60% of them get all the way to clear or almost clear at some point during this trial, and four out of 10 get completely clear skin. So that means there's a better chance than not that you're gonna to get to clear or almost clear if you continue to use the medication. We also found in patients who got to completely clear skin when they stopped the drug, and we waited to see how long it took for the, the disease to come back, on average about four months of a durable remission. And again, that means patients have the possibility of a drug holiday. Let them get to completely clear, then if they wanna stop the drug, go ahead and have a holiday. You don't have to use it. Wait till your disease comes back. Now we're gonna talk about another new topical, and this is a phosphodiesterase tape 4 inhibitor, but not all PDE4 inhibitors are the same. Reflumolas is up to 300 times more potent than our currently available uh, crisoboral or premolast. It's already FDA approved for COPD in the oral formulation. It has completed phase three clinical trials for plaque psoriasis and is before the FDA waiting approval. This is also a once daily cream formulation, 0.3% once a day studied compared to vehicle, but they studied this in children all the way down to age two with two to 20% body surface area. And we found again that this drug worked quite well in getting patients to clear almost clear skin. After eight weeks, up to 42% of patients got to clear almost clear with that two grade improvement. We studied the intertrigenous areas separately. Again, this is a non-steroidal option. That means you can use it on multiple body surface areas. And it worked well for those sensitive skin folds. And most of these patients actually got to completely clear of their intertriginous disease. When we look at the reduction of itch, again, we see that these non-steroidals are working really well for reduction of itch. Up to two-thirds of patients had at least that four-point reduction in their worst itch. Here's an example of a thick plaque on the knee. Here's a plaque in the axilla. You can give patients one prescription, say, go ahead and use it wherever you need to. Use it on the thick areas, use it on the skin folds, it's fine. There's a long-term safety study that, again, found no new safety signals when patients had access to this drug over the course of a year. No new signals, and also tolerability was good over the course of an in year as well. There's another formulation of this topical PDE4 inhibitor. It's a foam, and this foam has been studied for the scalp, studied for sebderm, also studied for scalp psoriasis and body psoriasis. This is also the 0.3% the foam formulation once a day as compared to vehicle. And we found that on the scalp, up to 60% clear, almost clear of the scalp psoriasis, and up to 40% clear, almost clear with the foam formulation for the body psoriasis. In terms of itch, what can be so irritating for those scalp psoriasis patients, we saw over 70% of patients getting that four point reduction in itch. What about safety? pretty much the same as what we saw with the cream. No new safety signals and also very well tolerated. So the bottom line is don't forget about topical therapy. It continues to be the cornerstone for psoriasis treatment and we have a lot of great innovation, recently FDA approved and also on the horizon. Thanks so much.